and welcome to another episode of Throttle Stop Garage. In this episode, we're going to get the front cross member. I hope uh, we'll get it all tacked up. So right now, we're going to start working on uh, just finishing off some of the parts that I haven't got finished yet. So those will include upper control arm brackets as well as uh, some finalization on the steering bracket. So while we may not get everything put together uh, this weekend, hopefully we can get uh, just a little bit closer to getting this one done. All right, so on we go, back to work. Okay, in this bit we're just getting ready and setting up the uh, coilover brackets onto the upper control arm brackets. So we're getting ready to weld that up. Just getting all the angles adjusted and getting myself ready to go here, getting them tacked in. You'll note that I'm welding all of this on a piece of um, three quarter inch aluminum plate. Um, the other part I'm just using is a riser, but that aluminum plate's uh, pretty important here as we get going, as we're going to start putting some heat into the part. So having the aluminum in there will uh, essentially act as a giant heat sink and, and pull the heat out of it in a, in a hope to keep the part flat. That was what I was uh, trying to accomplish with this. We're looking good so far. Most of it tacked in there. Lots of flipping and turning and trying to figure out the right angles as we're going and you know, basically just trying to get this thing done. Lots of clamps. Got to use lots of clamps. I was clamping this thing. Was getting in the way I clamped it so much. Here we're just doing off the last little bits on these front side brackets and then getting the tops uh, weld it up there and I've turned it around here and put it on my magnet to work as a bit of a positioning jig. That actually worked out really well. Happy with that. Welded the insides of the of the shackle uh, part there, the top mount. Uh, I didn't weld the insides of the whole part. I just really didn't think it needed it. Little overhead camera. Trying to add a few new views. Now I'm just putting on the other reference uh, part. So we're going to be using the, um, the frame rail itself to reference this entire part so I'm just, you know, it'll capture it on both sides so I'm just adding those tabs in and welding those on. on it for about a week means that I'm standing out here a lot in the garage just kind of looking at it and trying to figure out if I'm right and it's really it's sort of difficult to do so I'm going to take a, a few minutes and just walk you through some of those processes we've already seen how we've used the, the levels and things to make sure that everything is is right uh, I had a whole bunch of calculations to do in order to get the in order to get the steering uh, located in the right uh, location which means this cross member has to get located in the right place and I've been losing sleep over uh, some of the connections I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm loving the way that I'm doing this so I'm gonna make up a few gussets uh, and we'll, we'll show you some of that as we go at any rate just to quickly go over a few of these things uh, it was important again remember that we have to have uh, the two pivot points down here have to be the same front and back so I'll quickly show you how I've, I've measured that. Then I wanted to make sure that they were the same height. Okay, so front and back is gonna indicate that they're parallel. Uh, and then height off the rail, because remember when I go to the curvy rails, I'm gonna lose uh, this flat reference surface here. So I need to at least know that where we're at here is okay. So I've got a method of doing that. And then uh, there's gonna be a few other things in here that uh, like how do I clamp it all up? So I've decided I'm actually going to tack it down to the jig. I, I just simply think that's the easiest way to do it is to just tack it down to the jig and, and be happy with that. 
um, as we get going along. Okay, so let's just quickly show you uh, what I've been doing and a few of the calculations, and then we'll uh, we'll get going on breaking this out. First up, we're going to have a look at how we uh, we get these two points measured. So I've actually got uh, a couple of the stare at, uh, if you don't have a really good uh, combination square set, go and uh, buy yourself one and uh, eat the receipt because uh, they're expensive. Uh, I, I seem to be able to pick these up on eBay for not too bad a price. Um, and I prefer the hardened ones. So these are, there's, there's two different variants. There's a hardened and there's a cast variant. This is a forged part and it's hardened. Um, and they, they're just wonderful. Anyways, and, and I got a good long blade. So this is a 24 inch blade. So what we're going to do with this setup is it's hard to do the center to center business on this stuff. Uh, and be somewhat somewhat sure. So if I just register up against those back arms, uh, I've just moved this side of the head to exactly one inch uh, and I'm going to push it up tight and then I'm going to slide this other head over. Uh, so that's going to give me a, a, a center to center measure by doing inside of that to outside of the other. Uh, and then we're just going to tighten those up. So that's going to be, well that's actually more accurate than trying to measure it and look at it because I'm getting a direct measurement. Okay, so that's that is what it is, and if I read it, uh, it's right on, you know, it's right on the design, uh, which is nice. So it's, uh, I'm just trying to have a quick read of it here. It's, is that 11:32? So 19, 11:32. So that's, it was the average of what we had before. So now I'm going to take my rods. Slide you forward to the front. And then just show you what I did there. Okay, so if we then just slide those in, actually, you can see that a whole lot better. Just hold on. If we just take you around to here. Okay, so those go in, and they're right dead on. There's no perceptible, I mean, there's, there's an. No, that was good for it. <laughs> There's enough wiggle in the rods, like in those the bolt holes. Actually, if I slide it forward just a bit more, we're not registering on the the thread as much. But I need to keep it kind of uh, at least in three of those holes. Um, anyway, we're we're not even wiggly here. Okay, so that's going to be that good enough. There's uh, if there's any slop in that. I mean, the bushing's looser than that, so uh, i got to quit being machinist on it and just call that okay. Now, at, at this angle, you can see that I've now got a, a little shout-out to the Mighty Car Mods guys, but it's not like they're going to watch my channel or ship their millions of people to adore my work. <laughs> As if I would care. Uh, anyway, it's kind of fun. Okay, so next up, we've got another uh, Genius eBay purchase which is uh, these little right angle deals that, that you can put another blade in and then you've got another set of right angles. And again, it's stare at stuff, so it's very accurate uh, in terms of how it's made and, and how it works. So that's going to allow me to measure off of here, so off of the height of the, uh, of the jig, up to the bar. So I want to just make sure, I'm going to hold that straight to the bottom, just right down onto it, right there, that's okay there, that's okay there. So now we know that we're the same height off of the bar, or off of the jig. And again, we're going to just uh, quickly go over to the other side. So now we're over on the other side, we haven't moved anything, I'm just kind of hoping you're in frame. but. Once again, we're we're dead. We're right on it. We're just able to scratch the top of that rod. Okay, so these laser cut parts are pretty good. I guess we're, you know, I, I agonize about this kind of stuff. I don't think there's any reason for it. It's just the way I am. Um, we'll have to deal with that at some point in time. Maybe counseling will help. But, you know, that, that's good. I mean... Well, it's a whole lot better than whatever was in there before. Uh, 
$20 eBay score. Go looking for those. I've got one now, so you guys are free to go and bid your brains out. <laughs> super, super handy for doing this kind of work. Okay, i got a couple more measurements that I took. I'll continue to I show you. Just change the square, which on the Starrett ones is the easiest thing to do. And on every other brand that I've ever used, it's not that easy. But on the Starrett's, they have a little notch dealio here that references things, so I could just flip that from side to side uh, quick as quick as you like. Okay, so now I'm going to measure with this this way, okay, and we're going to test um, how we're doing for parallelism on the underside of the frame. I'm just going to change the shot here. Combination square now set this way. You can just run this down between the two rails. We're going to set it in there and we can square it up and then we'll just tighten it down. Making sure that we're all oh, sitting on a weld. Okay, now that'll, that'll work a little better. Okay, so it's another direct measurement. I don't care what the what the actual measurement is. I'm only interested in this relative distance. Like, what's this distance? Whatever it is, is what it is. I don't want to be reading a ruler and be a little bit off. Yeah, that comes out of there just nice. And when I go to set it in on the other side, about the same drag, actually. I mean, given that this is tube, which is, you know, you can just push that home. Okay, so that's, you know, I'm starting to relax a little bit. I think that's okay. <laughs> but before we get done, remember I'm referencing these, uh, the brackets. Everything is going to get referenced from this front edge. So I really don't care. Like the back edges just sort of have to be where they have to be. And remember we set those 56 millimeters apart and we did all that work. But now if I just take this, I'm going to relax it just a bit just to make sure it's it's measuring true. And I take this and I set it up against that reference. So now I'm square to this. And again, if you've got a, a cheap, I mean, yeah, the best inexpensive ones are those yellow ones that I have. This, they're Stanley's. They're, they're actually pretty good. Um, but if you've got like a crummy combination square, you can't do this kind of work. <laughs> it's not, they're not accurate. Um, so if I take my little precision ground machinist squares and I run them up against this Starrett, it's dead nuts. I mean, I'm not going to put it on the, the granite plate and test it, but I, it's more than good enough for this work. Where, boy, if you take one of the cheap ones that you get at, you know, the Canadian Tire or whatever for 10 or $15 and you think you're spending some real money, they're not that good. I would not trust them to do this kind of measurement at all. Um, but, you know, the blade on this stair it retails for uh, what you'd pay for about 10 of those. So... They're, uh, they're pretty darn good. Anyway, so if I run this up, enough whining about tools. I think you need good tools, guys and gals. Uh, and I, I, I hear people complaining about, well, uh, anyways, you only spend the money once, so it only hurts the one time. Using a bad tool hurts every time. <laughs> uh, it's something I learned a long, long time ago. Anyways, so if you move this forward, you can see that we're just, I mean, I... I don't even know how I managed to get it as good as that because I was using a tape measure. But that's, that's pretty darn nice. Anyways, and I've checked every single one of these on the way back. I mean, as you would. Uh, and they're all fine. So we're, we're as good as it can get. I, I tested the cross square. I did everything. And it's, I think we're ready to weld it and, and stop playing with it. So we're going to get that done and stop talking about it. But the one thing I wanted to mention just before, uh, before I leave you was uh, I had a moment. Last night, it was, uh, you know, anyways, my wife's away, I was out playing in the garage, and I took this part, that's my little control arm, that's got to fit in there, and remember, I wanted them to fit really nice, so I just wanted a, a word to the wise, when I went to set this in here, and you can see it, that's got the kind of slop that would make me cringe, it's not good. Uh, so that caused a moment of panic. I, I don't mind telling you that. I was out here last night again measuring. I didn't do any work. Um, well, I guess measuring is work. But I was out here for three hours making sure this was okay so I can show you in ten minutes uh, how it's okay. And then I thought about it for a minute. 
and I went, oh, that's not the build part. This bushing gets changed out for a polyurethane bushing. And the polyurethane bushing is in the other arm. And I checked the other arm and it fits perfect. So the bushing is just a little different, right? The height of the poly, the, the way that it inserts is different. Uh, and thankfully, I mean, if you were building this based off the stock part and you were going to use polyurethane bushings in here, you'd set this up so this would go in and the fit would be good on this, which means you'd be about an eighth of an inch sloppy, uh, or too tight, I should say, and you'd never get that polyurethane arm in there. You'd have to jam that sucker in there uh, and it would hurt just a little bit. So this has been set for the, the poly arm, the, the arm with the poly bushings in it and everything's fine. Um, and that did allow me to sleep last night. So that was, that was awesome. Oh, and by the way, we're, we're done with the uppers. I know in the set, I will have shown you the weld on that. Or maybe it was in the previous episode. I don't even know where I'm at in episodes anymore. It's kind of a pain that you guys have watched this channel long enough. You know the way my brain works. It's a little bit all over the map. But there's the upright. Uh, she's all ticked up. I'm hoping you can see the welds. I've, I've been working on the lighting and stuff. I've now got a diffuser on this LED light. And I put some tissue paper in it to try to uh, make it a little better. Anyway, there's the, the TIG on that. Um, and I love it when you get a part and it's just right and uh, they ring. That one doesn't ring so good because the other part's on it. But I mean, like when you get a, something and it's nicely made, there's just a sound that it gets when you like. It just rings like a bell. It's great. So I'm super happy with those. And they ended up flat. Now this part over here, where this mounts, remember on the old one? When I welded the line on the old one, they all bent and warped and everything wasn't good. Well, you know, having it on that big aluminum plate with all the clamps in the way, um, really did work well. But there's the upper control I'm mounted on it. There's the tabs that she goes down on there. So you can see that just, well, there's nowhere else that can even be. That just fits right in there. So that's a lot better than, I mean, okay, I'm get, I can slide it on the rail, well, theoretically. Yeah. Oh, it's actually a nice, tight fit. But when that goes in, I'm going to be able to line those up. I know that they're uh, square uh, to the rail, and therefore they'll be parallel to each other uh, on the rails. That's going to work so much better than anything else. And then I've left myself nice long tabs in here, so this will be fully welded all the way around. Um, and I'm starting to like this part. So that piece is done. So we're making some headway here, hopefully. Okay, let's One keep One of the rolling. parts we are going to make today that I'm going to get going on here is, this is the way this is going to connect, right? So we're going to be welded here uh, all the way around. Um, this is on that front part. Remember, the back arm is wider material, right? So it's going to come down and connect with the sidewall of the tube. So that's what I'm a bit worried about. I'm just, I'm a bit concerned that that this joint here may not be okay. So I'm going to add a gusset here that goes from, from top to bottom. We'll just go over and make those right away. And at some point when this all gets welded in, I will add a gusset here. I, I don't know if I'm going to do a full tube one. Basically, I'll have a look at it and then, I don't know, it's not finite element analysis or anything fancy. It's just looking at it and over building it um, the back I'm still reasonably happy with the back remembering that we're gonna lose a section of that right because the tube curves up we're gonna be taking away a little piece out of here in order to have the tube fit in uh, and yeah the, the fit here is not perfect um, let's just give you a little look at that See if I can see it. So that's, there's about, it's not an eighth of an inch, but there's a little bit back here that's not perfect. Um, and that's just me, right? That was somehow on the drawing, something went wrong and the tube was cut and that's fine. So I've got it all jigged up here properly and that's fine. So as we've just proven, <laughs> so we're okay with that. 
All right, so let's uh, go over to the bandsaw and get some parts cut. So I went ahead uh, ahead of time and I made a cardboard template that referenced the tube and uh, picked up the angle of that upper control arm. And then I've just um, I've cleaned up a piece of two and a half because two parts laid out on a piece of two and a half and they didn't lay out on a piece of inch and a half by inch and a half. Uh, so anyways, I've just buffed that up again with the sander of doom and uh, we'll cut the little triangles out there and then we'll fit them up and we'll see how they fit. You can see they're not um, they're not symmetrical. Oops. But that's the way they're supposed to be. So it was right about there when I thought, oh, I wonder how much I'm pulling this. So I got those bars back out and then they wouldn't fit. So that wasn't good because they fit perfectly before. So a couple of screw jacks in there and it opened it up a little bit. Then I finished off the other welds. It's sort of fun to go back over this and try to go, okay, at what point did we get the big pull? Uh, and it wasn't that bad. I mean, the pull wasn't that bad. I've got it all out of it now and, and things have gone well. But the temptation is always, you know, you've got to weld it somehow. But again, probably would have been better if I'd welded it all uh, and once the frame was completely done. But you can see the number of times I've had to turn it over or turn it around or flip it just to get at the location for the weld. So just, I don't know, hindsight might be 2020, but I don't think we're entirely incorrect in how we did all of this so pretty much the best I could do
Okay, so the welding is finished. I'm gonna try to talk over the fan here while I, uh, I get this done. It didn't, uh, didn't turn out too bad. I'm, I'm uh, happy enough with that. The, uh, the welds look good. Uh, and it, uh, as you saw in the stop motion, because I'm going to include that footage, I did have to put a scissor jack on each side here and then pull these things a little bit back into, into dimension. Of course, what what's going to happen there is, you know, you're heating here. Uh, you will, I probably will cut the footage of me just sitting there thinking about it. You got to plan uh, which way you go about welding all of this and how you're inducing heat and where the contractions are going to take place and, you know, uh, anyway, I got it about, I'm going to give myself a, a pretty good mark on that one. It's mostly good. So on the far side here, you know, that rod almost goes all the way through. So there's actually like, it's it's like the sense of rotation is just a little bit twisted. So I've got this distance and this distance correct. You can see here, we're, we're back to right where we want to be there. And this is still off a little bit at the back. So I straightened that out, but I can't get this little twist out of it. And you know how much I care? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> It isn't you can matter. see there, I'm. it's just up a little bit, which means this piece here needs to go up in order to have that hole aligned. So the it's twisted down just a touch. Again, we're not gonna worry about this. Uh, this one here is on the other side. It's, uh, it's kind of the same story actually, but this one's just a bit worse. Yeah, it just kind of won't go in there. But as I look at it, I can also see that the mount for the frame is also a little bit out there. So I'm going to remember that I'm going to tack this side on first. Then that side, I'm going to pull it as I put it in place. And then we're going to be okay there. That should, again, don't go crazy with this kind of stuff when you're building it. Uh, there's still another weldment to come. This is still going to move even more. So it's good to know we can move it. Uh, and by how much. Anyway, let's get back to just the finished two seconds. And we look there, right? Sorry, that's not lined up. There. And that makes me happy.